until June. So this is week five. We're going to talk about you, not me, not ideas, not examples. We're going to talk about you, the participants. We're going to go through your questions and answers. And Course Sites people, Blackboard people, will demonstrate for a bit, and we'll have some reflections. On the front page is the, a picture of the IU School of Education, one of the most, I guess, brilliant designs in terms of schools of education in the world. And I've seen many. Uh, and we may get it bigger, in fact, soon. We may add a third wing on to this place, but we'll see. Uh, the room I'm in has just been remodeled. Uh, it's a suite. It's Studio 101. And um, as you can see from that picture, we're in Indiana University here in North America. So we're going to start with North America people today. All kind of sort of North American people. We're going to start with actually somebody from another country, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second here. So these are my lovely and brilliant and very helpful teaching assistants from Dong Yil Song, who just sang us a song. Dong Yil, come on back here with your guitar. Are you going to sing us another intro? Come on back, come on back, Dong Yil. You're going to give us another song. If you missed him singing, he's going to give you a little piece of that song here in a second. We've got Kimberly Cyber. Kim's right here. Kim, wave at everyone. She's, she's the one responding to everybody. And we've got Yua Ma, who just got her master's degree at Indiana in our Instructional Systems Technology program. Kimberly's right behind her as a former elementary teacher, right, Kim? Kimberly just went through the whole city of Bloomington in the brain exhibit and posted it in Facebook if you want to see the brains of Bloomington. We've got these giant brains. Abdullah is here. Uh, he's actually remote today. He was with me last week sitting next to me. He's from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. He's my doctoral student. Cindy is from up north in Indiana. Cindy, are you with us here today? She's up uh, near the board, not near the region, up by Chicago area. She's been my assistant three times. Justin is right here, aren't you, Justin? Say hi, Justin. Hello. Okay, great. We got Justin with us, and he was going to sing a song, but he's broken his hand or his thing. Carpal tunnel syndrome. So we're going to have uh, Dong Il sing some more. Meng Wan just got her master's degree, and Il Ho is working on his doctorate with me. So these are the eight great teaching assistants that we have in here. We're working on a project called Extreme Learning. You can go to the Extreme Learning website and find out a little bit more about what we're doing with Extreme Learning and how people's lives are being changed with technology, and we're documenting the empowerment moment in the life process. You betcha. You betcha. Wonderful, Lynn, to have you. Lynn, Lynn, I'll have your picture in here, Lynn, in a second. Well, I want to introduce the Dean of the School of Education. You can see the School of Ed in the wintertime on the bottom and in now in lovely springtime. Uh, and as we're introducing Dean Geraldo Gonzalez, who was born in Cuba, moved to Florida, was at the University of Florida, which is in the show. I've got a picture of the University of Florida and Florida State in here. He's now at Indiana. Soon he's moving to Alaska and then up to somewhere in northern Canada. No, I don't know about that. But uh, Dong Il is going to sing a little intro. We got your guitar, Dong Il. He's going to sing a little intro just back to that same song you were singing earlier for people who didn't hear you sing. Uh, to get the, the dean, we'll say a few words here about the MOOC and what his perspectives are. And then we're going to go around the world, look at all your pictures, what all of you sent me from Europe, from Africa, from the Middle East, from um, Korea, so parts of Asia. Uh, we don't have any South America pictures in here, um, but we have many others from around the world coming in here. So let's have Dong Il sing a little intro. The Dean's going to say a little, um, a few words about IU, and um, then we'll go to your your pictures. <laughs> Same song? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unjarul 
내생 최고의 사랑인지 미친 사랑의 시작인지 절대 후회는 없을 거야 이제 우리 시작할까 워우 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 Thank you. And that is Dong Yul Song singing a song. How's that? Hey, let's let's do a little polling question. Who liked that song? Yes or no? Who, who wants another one? Let's do this. Yes or no? Who wants another song? We'll get them back after break time. We got a few people saying, ah, no, no, no more songs. But most people say yes. 38 say yes. Let's get more songs. Let's move it over to Gerardo Gonzalez, and he will talk a little bit about uh, MOOCs from his perspective, what he thinks um, universities, K-12 schools, and others will be doing in this age of the MOOC, and uh, what we do here, what we specialize in here. Gerardo, it's great to have you with us. And uh, you want to give us a little overview here. Well, thank you, Kurt. Nice to uh, nice to join you. I, this is my first experience at MOOC. Is that what you call it? <laughs> well, for those of you who had a chance to to look at my uh, at my picture there on the screen, uh, the first thing you would notice is that I have my summer cut. Yeah, well, it's summer up here, you know. And I know some of you may be down in in South America someplace, and, and maybe you're coming on to winter, but but here's summer. And uh, even though um, Professor Bunk said that, you know, among my travels, I was considering Alaska. The, the truth is that uh, this is about far north as I go. I am a native of Cuba, and you don't know this, Kurt, but I just came back from Cuba, actually. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, it was a, a, a study tour sponsored by the IU Alumni Association. Uh, we went to Havana and Cienfuegos, Trinidad, uh, various places down there in Cuba. Uh, that's where I was born, you know, and uh, I've actually um, had not been back since I came here to the United States as, a, as an immigrant. So this was, uh, this really? was, yeah, this was uh, 50 years after I left. So it was uh, quite a quite a, an interesting and and emotional experience for me personally. But most more than anything else, it was a, a real learning experience uh, because you know Cuba uh, has sort of become in a way like a um, uh, like a like a museum, you know. It's it's it's, uh, it's like it's been frozen in time. So Havana has these beautiful buildings that are colonial style, uh, just just grand beauties that uh, over the years have uh, have deteriorated. And so there's a tremendous need for development and refurbishing of of the infrastructure there because of the changes uh, on the island. But the thing that struck me most was the the warmth and the beauty of the people. Uh, they were absolutely marvelous, and even though um, you know I'm I'm an immigrant and now I live here in the United States, um, uh, they welcomed me with open arms, made me feel very welcome, and 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 were really pleased to to connect with me and have a chance to just interact. And uh, what it uh, reminded me of is um, uh, how close the world really is. Uh, you know, uh, because of the Cuban American uh, politics and so forth. Even though Cuba is only 90 miles away from Florida, once you're there, you might as well be, you know, a thousand miles away. And yet, um, there is a bond that connects people across the world. And um, and I think that's one of the wonderful things about technology. You know, technology has empowered people with very different ideas, uh, different culture, different perspectives to come together around important. Um, uh, developments about important opportunities to share, to learn from one another, and, and I think one of the, the nicest things that has happened here at IU um, is the, the the development of technology as a as a central element of our strategic plan for the School of Education. As you know, when I came here as dean in the, in 2000, uh, we together the faculty, the student staff engaged in the process of strategic planning. That's not a new good thing we do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask a professor. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what he might say, you know? But uh, one of the elements of that strategic plan out of five uh, goals was to, to maintain a leadership position in technology. And, and frankly, uh, no one has been more important to us achieving that goal, I think, than, than Professor Punk. So you are all very fortunate to have him chairing with you uh, this uh, new experience, this mock experience uh, with us here. I, I think this new technology is, uh, is going to revolutionize high, higher education in general. And, uh, and, and as has been true for 
Professor Bonk historically, he is at the cutting edge of um, experimenting with the new technology, bringing people together, and, and sharing ideas that ultimate, ultimately permeate the, the entire world. So I am just uh, really honored and pleased to, to have had a chance to, to, um, uh, to visit with you and, and to say hello to the class and to um, just share uh, a, few, a few thoughts. Uh, I think you are uh, together as a class at uh, the vanguard of the next uh, revolution in, in education. And so I commend you for taking um, your time to um, uh, commit to learning in this way, to sharing your ideas and your thoughts. And, and again, I don't think you could be doing it with a better uh, faculty member. So we at IU and at the School of Education are, are very pleased to host this class, uh, very pleased to, uh, as we say around here, make you part of the IU School of Education family. So congratulations to you. Good luck. Thank you, Kurt, for inviting me. And I won't be as animated as he is, as nobody could do that. But I just want you to know how much I appreciate being here. I didn't know you just got back from Cuba. Even better. It's, uh, 50 years being away. I, I, we've had students go back to Iran after 40 years. And mm -hmm. uh, had, you know, to go back to a country where you're born, you know, uh, back mm -hmm. in the 50s, right? Really? So, and now to, to have a chance to to revisit. And 12 years as dean, I didn't realize either. So Yeah, time flies uh, when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank uh, Geraldo for joining us today. And I'm going to take back over control of the, the headset. Thank you very much for, you for coming down. And uh, You know, I think I like this so much, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> you guys are going to have to learn from me now. <laughs> He's going to drive, OK? Be careful. We got the dean driver. The dr He's the dancing dean, by the way. He's not the driving dean. <laughs> you do something because I don't have my suit. I don't have my suit and my tie either. Now we let professors do that around here. <laughs> OK. Dancing with the stars as uh, our dancing dean. Uh, so yeah, IU is, is really equipped with a, not the infrastructure here, the classroom space does attract and bring in a lot of people. And so we get visitors. So please come by and visit us. And I'll be happy to give you a little tour of the place here at, in IU. We're located right there in Bloomington, Indiana, as you can see, in southern Indiana, just south of Indianapolis. And this is Studio 101. This is our campus right there. And uh, we're going to go further south, where I'll be next Friday, down at Spalding University, down with Janice Polston, who is the associate librarian working with my friend Bob Johnson down there. Hi, Janice. Good to have you on the show with us. Thanks for sending the picture last night. If you don't know where Louisville, Kentucky is, home of the Kentucky Derby, uh, it's right there on the map. I've got pictures on the map. It's good to have Janice with us here. I think Charles knows Janice. And um, they just became the most compassionate university, I found out. And their president does adventure learning. She rode across the the Atlantic Ocean or something as a solo rower. So interesting place there in the middle of Louisville. We're going to go further south down to Graves County, Kentucky and talk to Marta Coleman, who just lost her blue healer, an Australian cattle dog, uh, and her daughter's down there. We can see that she's way down in the southern part, uh, Graves County, in the southwestern part of Kentucky and the Tennessee line. In fact, she works in Tennessee, in Henry County, Tennessee, as a former li uh, district librarian. And she's now a teacher who's been out uh, of work for a year because she's been getting treatment for stem cell transplants in Nashville, I'm getting to know Nashville and Vanderbilt apartments. Uh, she's down there in Paris County, Tennessee. Uh, Paris County, Tennessee, as you saw in, if we go back there a second, uh, Paris County is not far, uh, if you look up to the right and to the upper, you know, upper right, to Columbus, Ohio, where I was a week and a half ago. Uh, Yi Yang is there from uh, Franklin University. She took these marvelous pictures of the Big Ten campus there, well, actually near the Big Ten. Oh, Columbus, Ohio. And I was running there, go Buckeyes, a week and a half ago, right there. Actually, right there. Um, yeah, there's some pictures. There's Yi on Franklin campus. I joined her there a couple of years ago, and um, a marvelous place there. Franklin does a lot of online learning right in the middle of downtown Columbus, and there's Columbus, Ohio. If we move north of Columbus, Ohio, we get up to Michigan. And we go even further from Michigan, we get to Escanaba, Michigan, and we can meet June Cleese. June is in uh, social and behavioral sciences and helps students succeed. 
with her pedagogies. She does a lot of participatory learning in her classes. She uses a lot of videos and blended learning, as you can see there, and has some grants for this. So it's good to have June with us here. Uh, Israel's here from Greenville. I've been to Greenville. I've spoken in Greenville. And she's, she's got subject value pedagogy. Subject value. You can hear uh, more about subject value pedagogy from her in her discussion posts in the MOOC. Um, developing uh, a ways in which to connect with students and engage them with where they're coming from. Again, a personal responsibility for learning, self-motivation, interdependent learning, and managing their emotions. If we uh, look at her results, students in her classes find that this, um, this form of pedagogy strikes a chord with them. Looking at cause and effect relationships in history and other things. There's Escanaba, Michigan, near the home of the Green Bay Packers, my first love. Uh, and as we travel from Escanaba, Michigan, and the northern parts of Wisconsin over to Canada, we might run into Albert Munichino, a librarian from Hudson County Community College there in London, London, Ontario. If you don't know where London, Ontario is, actually south of Escanaba, north of Columbus. If you go halfway between the two, you end up there. And if you keep traveling east, you end up in South Berwick, Maine with John Scafidis, a math teacher from Marshfield Adult and Community College. He says, I want to thank you for teaching us how to apply all this stuff in the MOOC. Thank you, John. And by the way, you noticed that I was looking up for John's picture. I couldn't find anybody except this dead John. I don't know. I hope that w I passed away. I hope that's not your father. Um, or someone you know, but that's all I could find. And then he sent me some, hi, Zhang Wan's joined us. April's joined us. Good to have you, Zhang Wan. I don't have your picture in here, Zhang Wan. But then he sent me this picture. His wife and him are celebrating 35 years together. Good for John and Maggie. They're in Maine. And uh, there's some art classes there in Maine. And there's some waterfalls in winter time in Maine. Pretty darn, pretty, t pretty nice town. He says, I can count fish going up the fish ladder at the dam at Salmon River Falls. Yes, there is winter and snow there. Uh, and there's the location where John is in Maine, uh, southern Maine, near New Hampshire, near Boston, actually. If you know where Boston is, that's where John is. And we've got Paul there in Massachusetts at Pittsburgh State. Paul Bedouin, say that for me, Kim. Bodwin, thank you, Kim. Kim's been talking to Paul for quite a bit uh, during this MOOC. And he's a music professor. He's actually got a Wikipedia page, as I mentioned. Hey, Paul, good to have you with us. Paul's been sending me stuff from his Blackboard account, showing me the classes he's been setting up, having me look under the hood, as he says. So I'm looking under the hood and looking at his um, home page of his class as I call up the resources and take a look at the videos. In his Blackboard class, I get a short introduction of what to expect in the class. Uh, I get an assortment of music glossaries and videos. His first icebreaker there did not work last year, and he was sad. But then he started using different kinds of icebreakers, and he said, you know, while I was hesitant at first, I really like this MOOC. I love the MOOC. It's, you know, part of who I am now. Uh, I'm going to miss the MOOC. But I've learned a few things from a music class. This past spring, I had 24 students, and it was a challenge to get them to do much of anything beyond listening to lectures and taking quizzes. But uh, you know, my discussion board was dead out of rival. But now I'm using some icebreakers in my class, various ones, to get them going and building communities in my class. This past Monday, they are really going at it. You can see the number circled there. Tons of people contributing in the icebreaker in that session. He says he's got juniors and seniors connecting with freshmen and sophomores on their musical interests. He's got um, students creating their own little portfolio of their musical interests, if you will. And he's got uh, two women in the class who are due to deliver babies who have formed a support group with one another in his class through the online discussion forums and other things. Uh, yeah, Paul. And he's got a smash hit, his museum room. He has a first project for students to create a museum of cultural exhibits. It's an icebreaker that connects them on interests and hobbies and majors. And um, another MOOC idea is to have a wiki page for learning music vocabulary, having them post terms and video links to the terms, something he learned about in the MOOC here. And he says it's a big hit. So that's that's from Pittsburgh, and there's where Pittsburgh is on the map. And we can move down to Yarl and find out where Yarl is, a director of course sites and language. I'm going around North America here, then I'm going to Europe. We can see Yarl has a bug. 
you know. And so I told Jarl, we can get rid of the bug here today. <laughs> He's also a language arts instructor. And we also have um, Sarah Bishop Rich, who's a, uh, a Indiana native, I think, or she lived in Indiana for a long time. Her mother is here. And um, she's moved out to DC to be part of Course Sites and be a community manager. You've probably heard from Jarl and Sarah in the MOOC. You might not have heard of Nina, but Nina is also part of the team. She's also a former James Madison basketball player, and she's a scruffy player, as you can see. You don't want to get in her way. <laughs> she's quite uh, tenacious, as you can tell, and they probably won a lot of games with her. Uh, and we'll probably have a lot of good discussions with her in the MOOC. Uh, Blackboard headquarters is there at 650 Massachusetts Avenue. I even give you the zip code and the sixth floor. Go look them up. Take a look. Go to DC. Go visit them on uh, on a trip to the monuments and so forth. If you go further south, now let's get a let's get a polling question. How many of you have been to DC? Yes or no? Uh, American University is on Mass Avenue as well. I think. Uh, Kelly is probably there at, at who just typed that in. That's right. We need to go visit Kelly. We can visit Yara. We can visit uh, Sarah. We can visit my sister. It looks like a lot of people have been there. 25 people have not. OK, interesting survey results. We've got 184 people here. Hi, uh, Mitch is with us here today. Alexa, Elaine, Alex. Uh, we've got uh, Kathy Cuppert uh, here from Hartsville, Carolina, South Carolina, teaching Spanish online and using online stuff to blend her face-to-face classes. You saw a picture of her campus at Cooker College there. Uh, and this is where it's located in terms of the United States. Uh, Terry Anderson worked for the FBI for six years, it says. OK, we don't have, oh, FBI right there in DC. Sorry about that. We missed you, Terry. Albany, uh, Georgia, not Albany, New York. Uh, we've got uh, Svala Otteson from Troy University, originally from Iceland, who loves the MOOC. And she loves the turtles of Albany. And you can see where Albany, Georgia is. And as we go a little bit further south, Ruth is with us. Hey, Ruth is with us from Liverpool. We get to Michelle Tillander, who's on research sabbatical from the University of Florida. Florida Art Ed Department. And she's a crazy person, I think. <laughs> but she just said anyone who's in Florida can, is welcome to use her house now. So anyone from 4,000, I'm inviting 4,000 people to your house, Michelle. How's that? <laughs> Give us the address, you know? OK. She said, we're all welcome. There's Gainesville. We can be gainfully employed. I almost, hey, 32 days till Ed retires. Ed, you didn't send me a picture up there in Chicago. Too bad, bang, bang. Uh, <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> we got you know, Art Ed. They're in Gainesville. I was supposed to be there last month. But um, she says, we don't want you to, well. And she says she's using this class to prep her art class, to think about restructuring it, her art education class, and the good, the bad, and the ugly of the MOOC. And she did something to me. <laughs> I told you she's crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, for doing your crazy stuff. OK, we can move on to my former student over at Florida State, Vanessa. Are you with us, Vanessa? Uh, Vanessa was my, my top colleague. I don't see, uh, Vanessa's with us. There she is. She might have stepped away on a break. No, nope, yep, she's there. So that's Florida State. I was there two years ago, popping in their campus. and. Um, I probably have given more talks to Vanessa than anyone in my life. She's a wonderful presenter. Get her. Don't ask me to speak. Get Vanessa. She likes to go to Europe, in particular, all you guys in Europe, to Portugal, anywhere, Belgium. <laughs> She's in the Instructional Systems program there. And there's Tallahassee. I must admit, I'm glad my class is cap at 20, she says. I couldn't handle 450 in a chat all at once. <laughs> And she knows I'm literally crazy. Ah! OK, so we move up from Tallahassee to Mobile. Examma Ann Lowry, Vice President of Lowry, a, a dean there from Mobile. There's a couple pictures from Mobile, the University of Mobile. Some commencement address speeches there last week. Um, <laughs> could barely have 25 in iSmart. Yes, Anita. 
Uh, we can go and take a look at their graduates there in Mobile, Alabama, home of many hurricanes, I think. <laughs> Not the drink, the hurricane. We'll come to that later. Uh, and there's where Mobile is located. And as we move over to Louisiana, Monroe, Louisiana, Sharon Bowman, uh, e-learning coordinator from Delta, uh, Louisiana Delta Community College, who also worked with Bob Johnson, who I mentioned earlier from Spalding. Bob is all around the world setting people up with wireless. I will see Bob next Friday in Louisville. If you want someone really smart doing wireless, Bob Johnson's your man. Um, anyways, here's some graduates in Monroe, Louisiana. If we keep moving over from Monroe, we actually hear some shots of their, their campus. Uh, students uh, putting up some signs of graduation. We can move over to Houston, a great place there in Houston with Anita. Vras, uh, Integrated Science, Math, and Reflective Teaching, iSmart. I think Anita was on the beaches of Galveston today or earlier yesterday. But today, tonight, she's talking about smart people, iSmart people who are there with her in Houston getting free. This is a free master's degree. Their free master's degree that um, is, uh, help me out, that's Wendy, right? Did I say it wrong? Uh, it's not Sarah. Uh, so we got the University of Houston Go Cougars and um, funded by a grant. This is funded by a grant and ranked number three in the world. How many people want a free master's degree? You know, free master's degree. Let's get a yes, no question up there. How many of you like to take a free master's degree? Um, that's what they have. They have a free one for middle school teachers in the state of Texas. A research one university offering a free master's degree. How cool is that? And, and it's, a, it's a blended, mostly online, with Wimba sessions, with, uh, with uh, resources online, discussions online, synchronous sessions. And they've got, you can post the results there, Haviz. 49 say yes, 7 say no. Mark has joined. Hey, Mark has come with us here. There we go with the results of that one. University of Houston, there's her kids there with her and Tani and Nave. Uh, that's her campus there at the University of Houston and the team there in Houston and the teachers who have graduated through the first gala there last uh, week apparently getting their buttons there down at the University of Houston. Great place. We move over to Pan American University. Will Wat Watkins in Edinburgh, Tennis Tech. Texas. And I say Texas. Okay, Will's got cool stuff happening there. Will's got his own YouTube page. Will's got all sorts of challenges in uh, math, teaching mathematics for his students. Great homepage, Will. Uh, he said he's a novice, but if you go to his website, you can see all sorts of demonstrations, kind of like the Khan. He's got his own little Khan Academy going on there. If you've read the USA Today, today you saw articles on the front page of the business section on the Khan Academy. I had it with me here earlier. I lost my Khan Academy. Um, but anyhow, you can take a look at what Will's doing there at Pan American University down in Edinburgh, Tennessee, not Edinburgh, Scotland. We're going to come back to Edinburgh, Scotland here. Susan Galindo is with us. Valerie Holmes, not Mahomes, Valerie Holmes. Harriet Watkins. Harriet likes to look at the 10 habits of passionate people. That's what she told me in her Facebook account. At least that's what she posted in Facebook. <laughs> oh, Harriet, I'd get you sooner or later. Are you with us, Harriet? I don't know. Um, let's see if she's joined us with us here. I can go back up through and see. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't see her, but that's okay. We'll send her a note. Uh, you can see she likes reading to students there at the University of Texas at Arlington. So we got Texas at Arlington who need to be read to. <laughs> we can go to, to University of Texas at Dallas with Christine Molina Maxwell. She said uh, she found that multiple paths of finding what's right for teaching and learning is very important. One just has to not be overempowered by the volume of what's out there. That was her first day in this MOOC and what she had to say. Now, Christine's pretty famous. If you haven't taken a look at Christine's work, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing stuff. I don't know if Christine is, and she is with us here. We've been chatting on and off. Uh, there's a picture of her campus there, University of Texas at Dallas. She's a program manager for blended and online initiatives in the program uh, provost office. There is the, uh, the Yahoo Maps picture, and there's her interview on Leonardo. Now, you might not know what Leonardo is, but Leonardo is a project, a website, books, a 
pub set of publications, a support per, uh, mechanism for people who are interested in the intersection between arts and the humanities and sciences. And it was begun by her father and her husband's father as a joint project together. And you can buy their new book that's come out on Leonardo. It's an interesting name, Leonardo. Um, but there's her husband, who's the first double endowed chair. I've never heard of uh, a double endowed chair, but I just want one endowment. But, you know, heck, two endowments, geez, you know. So he's interdisciplinary. He's blending his blended learning. You know, we've got a lot of books on what this notion of blended learning is. So I think I got a blended, yeah. You know, don't buy my handbook a blended. Get this one. It's cheaper and it's better. Mine costs too much, it's too thick. This blended learning in higher ed by Randy Garrison and Norm Vaughn, it's a lot thinner. Get their book. They're good guys, too. Blended learning. Anyhow, Roger Moline is her husband, and they announced this April 17th. So I don't know if this is a new news, if you just moved there or not, but uh, you, can, you can read about uh, how Leonardo was launched there on the website, and you can, you can find out more and more information about Leonardo, uh, launched 45 years ago by her father, who is the owner of Pergamon Press, which has one of my books, actually, and her father-in-law, Frank uh, Molina, who's a rocket scientist turned artist, so interesting, and she's also the founder of the Internet Yellow Pages back in the 1990s. If you're lost in cyberspace, yeah, Christine would find you. So we need Christines. We need all the Christines out there to find us because we get lost. <laughs> and so um, it's great to have someone who's so darn famous out here. Uh, she's now got a new company, actually a new startup company, handling big data analysis, uh, access, and security. Chiliad, I'll say, but I may be saying it wrong. And it's in uh, Virginia and other states. And uh, she's just back from that. She's, uh, you can see her picture there is co-founder, a 35-year veteran of all this stuff. So great to have people there from Texas. We go up to Colorado. We go to find out about the E-Trade people. We had up there uh, last week Ryan Sheba, Director of Academic Instructional Technology at Adams State University now, where 10 years ago today I was speaking. And I had a tour of this 150,000 acre park and the National Sand Dune National Park. There's Ryan there in Alamosa, Colorado. And we go over to Tempe, Arizona, Arizona State University. We got Maria Salamu. Uh, in learning sciences there. She's an IU student who, I'm not sure if Maria's with us here. We've got uh, Leanne joining us, I see. Um, yes, Maria's with us. Good deal. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. And, uh, you know, Maria's done a lot of stuff there. She left IU so she could follow her advisor, Sasha Beer, about to Arizona State. Sasha's famous for virtual worlds and Second Life, and um, she's holding up the world is open sign there in Tempe and in the cactus parts, uh, in the desert parts of uh, Phoenix. And uh, she's studying virtual worlds and kids uh, doing quests um, to save the world there. And this is her dissertation data she's shared with us uh, here in the MOOC. So thank you for sharing a little glimpse of your dissertation data collection there in Tempe. So we're getting live streams of dissertation data collected. The last time I saw Maria was in the airport in Indianapolis when our plane was delayed, and then it was delayed again in Chicago. There's where she's located now. And there's where we were stuck drinking champagne and wine or whatever in both Chicago on the left, Indianapolis on the right, stuck, stuck, stuck uh, back in June as I headed to Kansas and she was headed to Cyprus. She is from Cyprus originally. We can go over to Homer, Alaska. Lynn Roof, doctoral student, California Institute of Integral Studies. Uh, there, she sent me these pictures this morning, and they were very big sizes. Uh, so I had to reduce some of these down to size. Actually, yours weren't as, as big as some of the other ones. Yours were okay. Major Tom, you with us, Major? Homer, Alaska. You can see the view that she has there as she's getting her doctoral degree from an institute in. Uh, California. She's learning from a transformative uh, institute. Uh, maybe she can type the name up for us. It's C-E-L-L -L or C-E-E-L. Uh, and um, now I've got a polling question for you. Oh, an A through E, Haviz. An A through E, if you could change the type of question to an A through E type of question um, instead of a yes, no. There we go. What topic from North, North America interests you the most? Now, going through extreme learning, iSmart, Leonardo, Quest Atlantis, or Subject Value Pedagogy? 
I'm just curious what people think. All you questers out there. Oh, interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. What are people interested in? Uh -huh. We got Escanaba people going to. Okay, go ahead and post that. A lot of ease. I want to hear about subject value pedagogy. Interesting. At first it was extreme, but they've switched over. People have switched their votes. They don't want to be so extreme. Interesting, interesting. Well, I guess you'll have to post some more about that. Okay, June. June Cleese is going to have to tell us more. Let's go to another poll. Which place in North America do you want to visit now? If you want to clear out that last poll. Which place would you want to Alamosa, Colorado, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, Homer, Alaska, South Perwick, Maine, or Tempe, Arizona? And we're going to take questions now for a few minutes after um, this poll goes up because we're going to switch slides to Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. And we've got a lot of people picking Homer and Tempe. Well, no, Homer. If people want to get to Alaska, look at that. A lot of people haven't voted yet. We got 194 people. We need six more to get to 200. Bring your friends. Bring your parents. Okay, let's go to the second part of these. We'll switch the slides here in a second. As he's doing it, I'm going to read some questions that you all have had. Christine Sinclair asks, I'd like to ask Course Sites and Kurt Bonk what they would do differently if they're going to do this again. Well, I think one thing that we would do differently in this MOOC session is the introductions. We would probably assign somebody to be in charge of hours during the introduction. Somebody from 8 to noon, noon to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12, and then midnight to 4 a.m. and so forth because there are so many people coming in to introduce themselves and they all wanted feedback. We'd also structure the interactions in the intros differently. So those are two thi uh, things that we would definitely do differently within there. Um, I think Major Tom had a similar kind of a question. Uh, his question was, um, I'd like to hear our opinions of what we've learned from the class and changes we'd make. Well, another change that I think we would make is we would alternate presentations from me with guest panels. We'd have maybe a, per a person who would have a panel every week or every other week. Maybe Ray Schroeder at Springfield, who's done this before. We bring in Ray every other week, and maybe me every other week, and so you wouldn't have so much information coming at you so uh, constantly. You'd have uh, two weeks to think about it, and then we'd come back. So I think we'd alternate and do eight weeks instead of four weeks or five. We'd do ten weeks, maybe, with every other week being a panel that reflected on what was said in the previous week. Um, that might be one way to change the surround a bit. Another thing we could do differently is to have the five weeks like we've had them, and then have another five weeks with five weeks of reflection on how to use them, and maybe some examples of all of you uh, talking about how you're using some of the ideas. And I see I may have lost my video there for a second. I don't know why, um, but we did for a second. It is back. So I think maybe we lost because we've reloaded. Maybe we're loading slides yeah. in. I'm not sure. If Kurt, if he's just, just um, yeah. pardon me one second. He's reloading the slide, so it, it works a little bit better and faster if the videos aren't running at the same time. Ah, okay. So we're loading slides here as I'm reading some of your questions off of here. Um, Carol Hartman says, please comment on the best of the best of R2D2 and tech variety for increasing instructor presence uh, in a massive open online class. Well, I think what I've done here at the end and what I've done with the globe is try to point out where people are coming from. So I think touching people personally with uh, something like a project like Ice Smart that Anita has or what Paul's doing with icebreakers in Massachusetts or what June is doing with her pedagogical techniques and philosophy up there in Escanaba. Uh, I think touching people personally with what they're, what they're doing, I think we could have done in week one more. We're doing it in week five here. So I think that's another change that possibly we could do is collect profiles of people, uh, more information about, um, uh, yeah, you, the slides are coming. We are, give it a second. I don't see them yet he, either, so it, it's going to be a little bit. Uh, they do take a little bit to load. So I think some more personalization, I think more profiles, uh, those things might help to create a sense of personal touch. 
Uh, again, I think panels, discussions, reflections, all those things are, are valuable, I would, I would believe. Jen Stidham says, what are five books and five blog sites that I'd recommend? Well, five blog sites include Jay Cross's Internet Time blog, Internet Time blog, especially if you're a corporate space. I'd say Rick Schreier from Saskatoon, S-C-H-W-I-E-R. He's a grad of Indiana from a long time ago. He has a blog, uh, some kind of cafe-like blog, I think it's called, Rick, Rick Schreier from the University of Saskatchewan. He's a very soft-spoken person, but has many, uh, I think, insightful ideas about where we're going. You may not have heard of his blog. You may have heard of Stephen Down's blog out of Canada. He's, you know, he's got a, his footprint all over the place, along with George Siemens from Canada. So people read George Siemens and Stephen Down's about connectivism. If you're in K-12 space, Will Richardson. I think uh, Will Richardson covers a lot of current trends in technology. And I think Carl Fish from, from Denver area in his fishbowl. Uh, is a good one to read in K-12 space. There are many K-12 people. Elliot Maisie in the corporate space. So we got Stephen Downs, David Wiley, George Siemens in higher ed education, Jay Cross, Elliot Maisie in the, in the, in the corporate space. Uh, and then in terms of books, that book I had on blended learning in higher ed by Randy Garrison and Norm Vaughn uh, is a good book. Uh, Michael Moore and Greg Kearsley's book on uh, distance education is a good book just called Distance Education, a Systems View of Online Learning. Uh, I think anything by Keith Pratt and Rena Paloff is worth uh, looking at for practice. If you're practical, want some you know, practical things you can read on the plane, uh, Josie Bass has a number of books from Rena Paloff and Keith Pratt, uh, P-A-L-L-O-F-F. -L 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 I'll have Justin type these in the MOOC. Um, and um, John Wiley and Sons, uh, Building Online Communities. If you're in the corporate space, you can get books by Patty Shank, S-C-H-A-N-K, like the uh, Online Learning Idea Book, you know, things like that. If you're looking for research, In Sung Jung from Japan, uh, another grad of our program from before my time, uh, In Sung Jung, J-U-N-G, uh, I think the slides Maybe popping up here in a second. More questions have come in. My, my assistant sitting next to me might give me some more questions. Uh, Barbara Pittman asks, as students, we are all aware of time frames and workloads. And many of us have expressed being overwhelmed. Um, and you know, how do you do it? Uh, how do you manage this online class um, from an instructor point of view? Well, I was up till 7 AM this morning getting these slides ready. I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not easy, but I know it's going to be saved, and it can be reused. So if we don't mess up here, if we don't you know, uh, have uh, many glitches in the system, and I say that now crossing my fingers, uh, I know the time will be well invested. So I, uh, you know, I've also got some people helping me as assistants in here. Hi, everybody. This is Jarl. I know we just lost Kurt for a second, so pardon. Uh... You've lost me. Am I back? Oh, there you go, Kurt. Sorry. Have I been chattering away and no one heard me? <laughs> just for the last just 30 seconds. OK. So the, so the best journals in the world some people are asking about. And you know, if you go to my home page, under resources, I've got a list of 60 journals, all linkable. You know, some of the better ones in the field um, include the Internet and Higher Education, which is Social Science Index, the Internet and Higher Education out of Nova Southeastern University. Uh, we've got the Journal of Asynchronous Learning Networks, which I think the Sloan Foundation of funds or backs. There's also the Journal of Computer Media Communication. It's also specific ones like the British Journal of Ed, Ed Tech or the Australian Journal of Ed Tech or the American Journal of Distance Learning, or the Canadian ones. Um, so there's specific ones that are very valued um, and in high, high acclaim. There's a Journal of Interactive Online Learning out of Alabama and Idaho, J-I-O-L, Journal of Interactive Online Learning, which is open access. There's a Journal of, there's the International Review of Open 
International Review of Research on Open and Distance Learning, IRROTL, which just trashed an article of mine totally and told me I should go hang myself in a closet and never come out. But I still like that journal. I'll give it a thumbs up. <laughs> um, so, you know, all that stuff, yeah. Bill Bridges said we have problems testing. Okay. Um, so are we still we're still loading those slides? Let me go back to some more questions. We have any other questions coming in from the side? Um, Astropolo says, as an extension of plagiarism, is there any actual research that shows how big of an issue plagiarism is? Is it a real issue or a small issue or a boogeyman issue? There is some research actually out there about plagiarism and what it is. And um, I do think there was an article in First Monday last year about um, issues related to using Wikipedia and, and other sites to plagiarize your, your, your work. Um, is it a big issue? It, it, I think there's an it depends. I mean, I've come up with 35 ways to reduce plagiarism. And no one way is foolproof, uh, except maybe iris scanning. But we also saw a minority report that you can take your eyeball out and use it somewhere else. So iris scanning and you know handwriting recognition or fingerprinting, all that are pretty futuristic. But they are, you know, Turnitin.com, Eve are all things you can use to see if there's a potential for plagiarism. Here we are with part two. And now I can maybe put my camera back on. Oh, I can put my camera back on, maybe. We'll see if I can or if I should. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, these slides are loading. How many of you, let's do a yes, no question. How many of you can see the slides as Australia and New Zealand? Yes, no question. Instead of an A to E, let's do a yes, no kind of a question there. Maybe you can't even. Yeah. Still taking a little while to load these. It looks like I might be frozen. Am I frozen? Can people hear me? Justin, can you hear me? Oh, okay. People can hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. I think Hafiz might have yeah. turned the video off too, so we can um, wait for him to put that okay. back on. Okay. Bill Bridge has rejoined us. OK. There we go. We got video back. Well, let's take a look at who's with us. Um, can you all hear me and see me now? Yes or no? Let's do a yes or no. Can you hear me and see me? OK. Good deal. Most people can. Excellent. Right -o. So New Zealand and Australia. Who do we have here? from New Zealand and Australia. Do we have Leanne in the house with us here? Uh, not the Leanne I was thinking of, but we'll, we'll move on. Liz Stover is with us. Lois and Leanne, Laura, OK. We've got uh, Mitch. Is our my man Mitch with us here, IT and support officer from Babel Building. How would you like to work in the Babel Building? <laughs> yeah, Mitch is with us, and his son maybe as well. University of Melbourne. Good place. I was there a year ago. Um, very cute kid, yes. All right, so that's a great place to be. 6 a.m. in the morning, 7 a.m. now. There's where it's located in terms of Melbourne and the Bay. University of Melbourne. Um, there's a picture of his campus, in fact, and another picture of Mitch there. Uh, good place. We also have uh, Leanne. Miguel, who uh, took me around Melbourne uh, last March and April and in her very nice vehicle. I want one of those. She's just got her PhD from Deakin University and looking at mobile learning there at Deakin. Sent me these slides this morning at about 6 a.m. So thank you, Leanne, for sharing those. There's a couple pictures of the campus there that she also sent. Uh, I spoke there two years ago. Actually, I think um, two years ago, and there's where it's located, not far from the University of Melbourne. Actually, they have many campuses. It's not just one campus, and I think the University of Melbourne has many campuses, but Deakin has many there. And there's also Monash University. There's many community colleges there in Melbourne. I was there for Formula One, and the Global Learn Conference was there. 
We also have Sydney, Christina Hollis. If you want to read a blog, I don't know if Christina's with us, but my goodness, she's really thinking deeply about applying this stuff there at Macquarie University. I was there at Macquarie about 11 years ago. Nice place there, Macquarie, on the western part of Sydney. Uh, John Hedberg is there, famous guy in e-learning. Lots of famous people at Macquarie University. Her blog, she's got one on, you know, a uh, reflection on the tech variety model, a reflection on R2D2 model, a reflection on all sorts of things there. And I'm now getting worried because my brother keeps texting me repeatedly, and I hope my mom's not having another stroke, but uh, we'll keep going here. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, so we got um, her WordPress there at Macquarie University. Take a look at her WordPress. I mean, it's fascinating what she's applied. There's, there she is. There's Christina. Um, just very insightful ideas. And she's, she's got better ideas than my book. Don't even buy my book. Just read her blog. I mean, she's applying and adapting. And someone asked about books earlier. And I said, you know, these books from Payoff and Pratt, building online learning communities and creating a sense of presence. Someone asked about creating a sense of presence in online teaching. This is a book by Rosemary Lehman and Simone Concepcion from University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Kearsley and um, Michael Moore, Craig Kearsley and Michael Moore have a book on uh, distance education, the third edition. This is probably the one to buy if you want to buy one book. Um, In Sung Jung has a book on distance learning in Asia and blended learning. She's brilliant, actually, just brilliant. And I uh, had the other books up there earlier. Uh, the idea book from in the corporate training side from Patty Shank. S-H-A-N-K. And if you want to get a book for $1, the best book I had up there, the week one from Charles Wiedemeyer, Learning at the Back Door from like 1981, definitely get that book you know, on, on Amazon for $1. Anyways, we need to go on through here. We've got Macquarie University there, and we can move on up from Macquarie and, and find out what she's been doing there uh, as someone trained in music theory and music teaching but she's been involved in blended learning, mobile learning, and Moodle. The magic Moodle word. I know that Blackboard now owns the um, Moodle rooms and um, the folks there in Australia uh, who also do service at Moodle. We've got her blog here, Applying Tech Variety in R2D2, and we can move on to Africa and get to um, Sukhyana uh, Walji, who's studying for her master's from the Open U there, and she's doing uh, writing skill tutoring and training while in the MOOC. All right, I think she's in here right now smiling at all of us. Her blog post is fascinating too. Read her blog. She's really applying a lot of ideas from this class. If you get a chance, yes, she's trying to us, and I've been reading it all week. There's her location there in Cape Town. Thanks for, uh, that's a beautiful place. I've never been. And another picture I found, ha, 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 I find pictures of people. Hope you don't mind. Um, Ruth, you're the only one I think I couldn't find there in Liverpool. We'll come to Liverpool. We now move up to the Middle East, which is now considered parts of the Middle East, I guess. I don't know. Um, this is what they say. I'm sure if Turkey would say they're in the Middle East or Europe or wherever, we go to Dubai Men's College in the desert, where I've been many times, and we can get to Lana. Hi, Sat from Dubai Men's College, who teaches um, or helps in vocabulary, I think. I saw her vocabulary website. I saw her Facebook account. Lovely picture there on Facebook. And now we're waiting for a slide to load. OK, so now we've got, uh, I'm waiting myself. So we'll see if this one were at slide 23. We'll see. We'll try that again. There she is. Um, We've got a question that's come in. Um, uh, yeah, just checking on my brother. My brother, yeah, he's also losing his job. My mom's having strokes. I don't know. I, I'm, you know, we'll have to take a break here in a few minutes and find out. Uh, my poor little mommy. I um, hope she's okay. Anyhow, Lana, she's an online facilitator with Finnish. Uh, Finnish facilitator. They have a joint program between UAE and Finland. And Tampere. You can get up to Tampere and talk to my friends up there. Um, yeah, all sorts of people up there. And my friend Io Ropo and uh, Rina Raikkanen and 
all sorts of friends up there in, in Tempani. Ah, uh, good place. Everyone, you know, the best place in the world is probably Finland, you know. If it's not Korea, it's got to be Finland. If it's not Edinburgh, I guess, or Belgium. Anyhow, she's using Moodle as well. So there she's getting a great certificate. She, and she says she's using these current TV, Big Think, Wikis, Reschool Resource Provider. She's using lots of stuff from this week. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. And now my brother is actually calling me. And so I have to tell my brother that uh, I'm in a session right now. And I'm not sure, do you need me, Richard? I'll call you back. Okay, he's buying my mom flowers. She didn't have a stroke. That's a good sign. Okay, you want to know how many flowers I should buy her? <laughs> oh, yeah, I sent money. Um, anyhow, there's the UAE to buy men's college. And of course, if we go to the UAE, we know it's close to. Bahrain and Qatar and Saudi, and I was there in 2003 before the Iraqi war. It's not far from Iraq and Iran. And there she is, falcon hunting. She is in the desert. And there's the Dubai Men's College. And there's um, Mark Kircher, who's also at Dubai Men's, and they have an annual conference, a biannual conference called Education Without Borders, that they'll pay almost all the way for grad students and undergraduates to go if their papers are accepted. If they have the top 100 paper, they'll pay the airfare as well. It's a very cool conference, Education Without Borders, laser light shows, opera singers, uh, Arabian horse shows. Uh, they have, uh, you know, five-star hotels. They put all these graduate and undergraduate students in. They feed them to the hill. Dubai Men's College there. As we move that, and that's Mark. You saw smiling Mark there. Mark likes the Burj Dubai. It's almost as, you know, you can see he's almost as tall as the Burj Dubai. He's measuring himself there, 2,723 feet um, for us imperial guys. Who thinks the Burj Dubai is, is cool, yes or no? Yes or no. Okay. That's poll number 16 of like 20, all right. So, okay. Vicki Cook is with. Vicki's with us from Greenville College, I think. Yeah, she's doing all the e-learning. And uh, ten, ten is Shrey. I'm not saying that right, but okay, we try. Will and Wei Lu is with us. Okay, posting the results. Most people think it's cool. Okay, how many, who wants to visit the Burj Dubai? We'll try that one again. Ha-ha. Let's well, visit the Burj Dubai. And now we'll go to, and we'll, we'll look at Mark Smith, the ATM at the tallest ATM in the world that does not give cash, only gold bullion. And he's not joking. Only gold bullion in the Burj Dubai. And he sent me this picture yesterday. And he says, that's pretty cool. Who thinks that's cool, yes or no? Gold bullion out of your ATM. <laughs> Interesting stuff there, Mark, you know. Is this cool? Yes or no? All right. Most people think this stuff is cool. Let's go on to Mark. Who thinks Mark Kircher is pretty cool? Not, not Mark Zuckerberg. Who thinks Mark Kircher is a cool guy? Yes or no? <laughs> Mark, I told you I'd get you back. Okay. Mark's the only one voting no so far. <laughs> All right. Give, come on. Thumbs up for Mark. Okay, he's a cool guy. 31 to 8, Mark. Sorry, Mark. 31 to 10. Okay, you can. You know, let's not post that one. Let's go on. Sailboat Hotel. <laughs> sailboat Hotel. Who thinks the Sailboat Hotel is pretty cool there in the UAE? Yes or no? They got the palms. They got all sorts of stuff. They got an indoor skiing rink, right? Interesting place to buy. And Al Dhabi. And Fijara and every place is, yeah. El Elaine. Okay. They don't think this one's cool. Interesting. Well, actually, I don't think, oh, uh, they do think it's cool. All right. Uh, Europe. Let's look at Europe here for a second, okay? And we can go to Florence. Yesterday, I was speaking to Florence in a consortium in Deer Institute there in Florence with Leonardo Tassi, who's with us. Is Leonardo with, I thought I saw him earlier. He told me he would be showing up here. He's, is he with us? Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't see him there. But uh, it's getting late. 
Yesterday he and I uh, were in a synchronous session from my back deck, from my house, talking uh, and, uh, about OER and about the MOOC and about uh, the world being open for learning. And so we, he sent me the lists of where his institute is in Catalina and Palermo and Rome and Florence and Milano and so forth. Yep. And now we got Anne Marie Everard. Everard? Can I say that? Help me out there. And we had her train station there in Paris last week. Not only do we have that, but oh, we're going to wait for the slide till there it is. Barbara's Corner. She says, What I can say about your event is it has an important influence on my practice. I'm not sure if it's conscious, but it's influenced me nonetheless. I'm excited about all this stuff. And there's part of Paris, the Montmartre, and um, the Eiffel Tower, and the Arc de Triomphe is not in there. But we get uh, Anne there. We got her picture, and we can see where she's located. And we can see an old picture of Anne Marie from 200, 300 years ago. <laughs> that I found on the web. <laughs> there, yes, uh, indeed. And now we'll wait for this slide to load. It's still loading slide number 48. Uh, and as this is loading, we get Eric from Belgium. And Eric is also known as Alex in Media Land. He says, what I will use from this course material is um, the engaging ideas and the tools and the connections in cyberspace. He's an ICT teacher, an e-learning designer at the U of I, whatever the U of I is. Hey, Alex or Eric. He says, um, would it be possible to produce a digest of our contributions as a book? He wants a digest. That's a great idea there in Belgium. And we can see where he is in Belgium. He's on, that's him on a boat, actually. I, I found this on the web. That's uh, Eric on a boat going from Belgium over to London or something. I don't know. But that's a, that is a picture of him somewhere on that boat. As we go up uh, from Belgium, we can scoot up to the UK and go on over to Liverpool. Before we do that, let me point out uh, that Eric uh, sent me a lot of links to Europe. We don't have time to go through all of these, like the early conference and the Bologna process and all this stuff that's happening. I just sort of, these are in your slides. Um, Kim has reapportioned all these European ideas according to the tech variety model in an interesting way, which I endorsed, and I said, let's leave it in there. 23 countries in the European Union, 23 languages, but Eric and Christine from Edinburgh put this together for us. There are a lot of acronyms in Europe, like the early conference, the European Association for Research on Learning and Instruction, or the Common European Framework for Reference in Languages. Uh, as we go through, we find out the early conference, which I've attended three times, is like the AERA conference here in the U.S. It's um, a conference for European researchers looking at learning and technology and psychology. It's the intersection of all that stuff. Cool conference, usually in great places like Athens, Greece, or in uh, Nijmegen in the Netherlands, or in uh, some place in southern France, or, you know, very cool place. And we're at number 56 there in a... And we're trying to load that one. See if there are questions as this is loading here. Slide 56. And we're already at 507, so I want to be cognizant of time here. The Bologna process is something in Europe that um, was meant to help people get a degree or part of a degree in one country and transfer it to another to create standards for higher education. Um, sure, good to have you with us. We go on up to Liverpool, and Ruth sent me this this morning from Liverpool, Johns Moore University. It started in 1992, has 24,000 students there in Liverpool. And you know, we go to Liverpool, you start looking up all sorts of stuff, and I, you know, I'm looking for the Beatles, and all I can find is buildings, you know, and I'm still looking for the Beatles, and I get, I, you know, I get soccer teams, and finally I'm clicking on the Beatles, and I, I actually get the Beatles there in Liverpool. It took me a while. Apparently people don't, don't listen to the Beatles anymore in London, in, in, in Liverpool, but uh, I finally did get there. Yeah, go Reds, go soccer team, yeah. And uh, now we can scoot off over, and uh, this is taking a little bit to load again. So we're on slide 61 here of 103. A uh, fascinating city there, Liverpool, isn't it? <laughs> I picked the right team. Okay, I saw that. <laughs> I picked your team, huh, Ruth? <laughs> All right, well, that's good. 
Uh, we can scoot over to Edinburgh, one of my favorite cities in the world, with Christine Sinclair, who will be teaching effective e-learning design in September. So she's in the MOOC to get ready. And this is the University of Edinburgh. Of course, when you're in Edinburgh, you've got to get to the castle of Edinburgh. And so you scoot up over. This is a wonderful place. Go to Edinburgh Castle. What a, I've been there a couple of, two or three times and um, go to the top there of the castle. There is a map of Edinburgh. And you can see where it's located related to Norway. We're still waiting on slides. We should do a yes, no question. Who can see the slide that says Edinburgh, Scotland, and has a map with an A on you? It says United Kingdom. We're at 20 to 10 here. Coming in a little slow. Uh, let me pause for some more questions then while these are loading. Questions? Kim, do we have any questions? Oh, they're right here. Heidi says, Heidi, Heidi Ho, is there an online expert for language learning? Yeah, there's a person who is an expert uh, at language learning from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, who I can connect you with. Um, Joan is her first name, Joan Kim. And if you send me an email, um, she's got another name, middle name as well. But uh, she, she does a lot of ESL training, language training of teachers. There are many others. Here at IU, we have Farida Pollan, who, and we have a master's program in language learning at Indiana. Um, another question has come in. Can you address concerns about legitimacy for credentials acquired via online? Also from Heidi. You know, uh, at Indiana University, it doesn't say online degree. Now, in the UAE, they will check to see if you've left the UAE. They'll check your passport. They do not trust an online degree, even though they want to be the hub of e-learning for the world. They still don't trust it. So we're still in a phase here about trustability, about branding. Uh, we still want branded names like Stanford or like uh, Cambridge or like um, Seoul National University uh, in, uh, in Korea. And so you see that happening a lot, the branded names. But credentials acquired online, we do see a shift happening at the same time. We see more acceptability of online credentials, badges, and degrees, um, certificates. There is a shift happening. Is it full a shift? Is it full on? No. Are we close? Not sure. Is it different than three years ago? Definitely. We have definitely changed from a year ago or even six months ago in terms of acceptability for online degrees. But if you want to play it safe and go with a branded university like Ohio State or um, you know, Cambridge or Oxford or someplace around the world, you, you might want to do that for now. But it's up to you and your time. Sukiana asks, are there resources you mentioned, uh, open access journals? Yes, most of those journals are open access ones that I mentioned, not all of them. Uh, if you go to my website under resources, web resources, they'll have a link to all those journals I mentioned. So on the bottom left hand side of my homepage, it has a web resources and you will find those journals. And most of those good ones are open access today, but not all. Uh, many still are not. And I'm happy to give you my advices. Ruth asks, are you doing any, um, any research on this MOOC? I'm glad you asked that, Ruth. Next week, we're going to send a survey question about extreme learning to all the people in the MOOC. And I'm curious if any of you will take that survey. I hope some of you will take my survey. Um, and we, we might analyze um, participation patterns, but we'll get permission if we quote anybody. Or you know, actually, if you take my survey, you, you have to fill out a human subjects form. There's a, there's a permission form first. And it's a pretty simple survey. Uh, first Monday is a full access. It's, you're right, it's, a, uh, it's a open access. Can you recommend any programs for developing online uh, learning like a certificate program for developing learning, developing e-learning? Um, University of Maryland has a master's degree online. And the president or the head of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County is keynoting the Blackboard Conference. Uh, also, Walden University has a program, um, development of e-learning on the web. Florida State has a master's program. Indiana has a master's program in instructional technology. 
uh, most places do. Again, if you go to my home page under Web Resources, I have a listing of master's degrees that are online and some PhDs. Michigan State has a PhD with some residency. Indiana has an EDD. Aha. So Fred Haas, if you want to see what Fred looks like, there he is. He's going to apparently, I uh, don't know if I can get that up as close as I wanted to there, but you get a picture of Fred there. Yeah, He's uh, where the Boston Marathon begins at Hop Hopkinton High School, teaching screenwriting, English journalism, online face-to-face -face and blended. Thank you, Kim. We've got another question coming in. Ed Gary, how do you see the authoring of platform independent interactive open free textbook proliferating? How do you see the authoring of platform independent interactive open free textbooks proliferating? Well, there are 7 billion people on the planet, half of, well, maybe not half, 40% who have literacy skills of some kind. So we have 2 billion people who can write and who will take advantage of that, maybe 3 billion people, and that will only increase. Um, so. And the tools will get better. So, you know, we're going to have billions of, we will have billions of books on the web. Interactive books, probably in 10 years, they'll all be interactive in some way, shape, or form. We're not going to have a shortage. We have an abundance of this stuff. Well, I think what we have to ask is, how do we determine quality? How will we evaluate all this and, and review it? Will it be the number of page views or links to it? Will it be recommendations? You know, uh, all, the, all those kinds of things. Here at Indiana, or in the state of Indiana, we have something called Course Load. Um, Course Load is a new company up in Indianapolis that spun out of Apple Computer. The guy who had the idea, Mickey Levitan, was the number three idea at Apple. And they took the number one idea, which was the iPhone or some stupid idea like that. And they went with that, or the iPod. And so he left there, and he came to Indiana to create this I, uh, Course Loads. So you might check that out. Um, apparently, Apple's gotten interested in digital books all of a sudden since he left there. That's a little side answer to your question. I used to be on an e-book company called uh, Net Library, or yeah, and they kind of went under. Uh, and MetaText, MetaText is another one. There's a lot. Of, so how do I see it? It's going to proliferate. We need to have distributors. We need to have a writers guild. We'll have an e-learning writers guild, perhaps, Ed. Uh, we will probably have communities of practice for digital book writing, editing, uh, uh, instructors who use them. I mean, this is going to be huge. When you retire, you should just create a, some kind of digital book guild, I think, for, for all the people involved in this space, the media people, the, the people reading these books, the people writing these books, the people distributing these books, recommending these books. So that was uh, Edinburgh. Now we go on to Sweden with Major Tom who's applying, and he had both my books up there, as you can see. They're at the Swedish Armed Forces School of Logistics. He was told yesterday he has to go back. Um, right, Anita. He was told yesterday he has to go back and be the headmaster or something in the senior teacher at the War Studies Institute. He's been mapping out logistics there in Sweden. I had a chance to meet with him in Norway. He's got some ideas about production in learning environments. I'm going to let you read about it. It's, um, it's, we don't have time. We've got to go on to course sites. And, 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 but you can read through this and uh, his ideas related to preparation, planning, execution, evaluation, and revision, with apologies to Major Tom, uh, and about the technologies, the screen, film equipment, the studios, the photogrammers, the recorders that they've acquired. I met Major Tom there uh, with all these people holding up their hands there in, in Norway, in uh, Gul, Norway, with Gear Isaksen, the commander of the uh, ADL lab, the Advanced Distributed Learning Lab in the Defense University College there in Norway last year at this time. So there's the commander headquarters in the Arkansas Schuss Castle, another castle, a great castle actually there in Oslo, Norway. And um, there's Oslo on the map and Ghoul Norway on the map. And whatever happens in Ghoul stays in Ghoul. <laughs> According now, who thinks we should change that rule, yes or no? Whatever stays in Ghoul should stay, you know, happens in Ghoul stays in Ghoul. Should we change that rule, yes or no? <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> 
Oh, a majority of people say, go ahead and post that Havis. The majority of people say, no, don't change the rule. <laughs> All right, poll 22. Which place from Europe would you want to visit now? Brussels, Edinburgh, Florence. Let's do an A to E. Uh, Florence, Italy, Paris, France, or Piers Resort, Norway. Where do you want to go? No Liverpool, sorry, no Liverpool. Uh, no Sweden, sorry, Major Tom. <laughs> Margaret's saying E, and we got B. You can go right underneath that, uh, the hand there, and go ahead and select. If you haven't selected, go ahead and select. I'm going to select too. I haven't voted today. I'm going to vote on one of these places. I'm going to vote. Yeah, I voted. I voted for my favorite place. I like Paris, but that's not what I voted for. Okay, we got the results there, and it is Edinburgh, Scotland, my favorite place. Top votes, but not by much. Not by much. And right behind it is Florence, Italy. Behind that, we've got Norway. Some equal distribution there. And now taking over the lead, almost Florence, almost Florence. We go to Asia. Not many people who sent me pictures from Asia, but we did get a few from Dejan Mi Young Kim, Dr. Mi Young Kim from Seoul Elementary School, who's with us with her 3D glasses. They have smart schools in Korea. She went, you know, she was supposed to be with me right here, right now, but her visa got canceled. So she's back there sharing from Korea what's going on with her touch screens, her smart screens. And uh, there's Dejan, the smart capital of Korea. Seoul is the capital, but all the smart people, KAIST is there, the Korean, what does that stand for? Korean Institute for Science and Technology. I'm missing what the A stands for. Korean agriculture? No. Korean agnostic? I don't know. Anyhow, there's where she is. And we can see that um, Korea is creating a smart school in Sejong City. Now, King Sejong created the Korean um, writing alphabet, in effect. And now they're creating a new city for him, just south of Seoul, with smart schools, Chaesum Elementary School among them. There's Chaesum Elementary School. And as you enter there, smart school, everyone's smart. A smart school, like Anita's project, iSmart. Well, in Korea, it's smart schools. And there are the kids using their iPads to learn languages online there at the elementary school in Seoul. Hee hee. And he's typing in to learn English. So I don't get these taxi cab drivers like I normally get in Korea who don't know English, and they watch their televisions as they're driving. Okay. Not as bad as Riyadh, where they kidnap me, but... Okay, it's almost as bad. I do love Seoul, though. And they got robots now teaching English. So somebody earlier asking me about English, who was it, Heidi, you might check out what's happening with robotic English. You might check out Live Mocha or Chinese Pod or, you know. So they have these smart schools for robots, and there's a video you can click on if you get my slides. I've posted my slides to my Facebook. I posted my slides to Training Share, and these slides are posted to the MOOC. If you go to trainingshare.com, archived talks. If you want the originals, send me an email. Telepresence, video conferencing, getting kids to connect with one another. And then you go up to Seoul and you get Buddhist temples in the middle of downtown. And you can reflect on life like I was there last September. Great place, Korea. Lovely place. My son is from Korea. My father was there during the war. How many of you want to visit Korea now, yes or no? Go to a yes, no question. I have to change that, Havis, to a yes, no. Can you change that for me? I'm not sure if we can change that question. There we go. Thank you. I have to redo. I'm going to fill that one in, too. OK. More questions coming in, perhaps? Sherry says she loves Korea. OK. We'll post the results of that. Most people would like to go check out Korea. I have a warning for you. you some of you have voted yes. You forgot there's the DMZ. <laughs> okay, there's Mi Young and her husband and one of her sons at the DMZ with me last year. And when I was there, they conveniently handed me a ticket to get on the train to North Korea and said goodbye to me. So there I was on the last train station going to North Korea at the DMZ. That is the last train station and is the way we will connect South and North Korea together. Uh, that's the sister of TMZ. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Paul, for playing. Ding. Okay, Alex has joined the session. We see um, now, um, 
I did sneak out of the DMZ, and I will be at the Blackboard Conference in July. I hope to see some of you there at the Blackboard Conference in New Orleans, uh, along with my friend Ellen Wagner, and Salman Khan will be the closing keynote, as well as the president of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, Freeman Habrowski. So we'll be there. Hope some of you can join us down in French Quarter on Bourbon Street. If you don't know where that is, it's not far from Mobile or Tallahassee or Houston, Texas. Many of the places, Troy, Georgia. And there's Washington, D.C., the headquarters of Blackboard. And there's the New Orleans Conference. So we can get you there. there. Okay. Right about those robots. Okay, finally, did you learn something from this visual review of participants in the MOOC? Hopefully, this will <laughs> took me three days to put this together. I hope some of you, you know, learned a little bit about one another in the MOOC. Lo kumbaya. Lo kumbaya. Do we have any more questions coming in? I think we've got a few more here on the sheets. We probably need to go to a break here in a second. Um, OK, well, I'm glad we've done this. I know it took more time than what we had planned. Come to the Blackboard Conference. Go to Training Share. Get those slides. Um, uh, we're done. Um, we got to go to talk about course sites here. While we transition to course sites, uh, in five minutes, I would like to bring Dong Il back to sing us a song, and I can get a five minute break. Do I sleep? No. No, I, I used to not sleep. Actually, I've gotten smarter as I got older. I do sleep a bit. But it was fun collecting all your stuff. It's been fun being with you in the, in the MOOC here for five weeks. It's been great having, your, uh, having you show up. It's been a lot of fun. And I uh, hope, so, hope I can connect back with you guys some other time. So, um, so yeah, Charles is going to talk about uh, course sites. Uh, while he's doing that, Dong Il, come on back here. Yeah, I was just going to say, Kurt, why don't we Yarl's let the slides load a little bit? Um, Yarl, do you have a you comment? So, Young Il can sing a song, and then maybe you want to draw a couple of names for some books? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, let's draw some names for some books. We can do two now before he sings and two after he sings. Uh, Kim, come here and draw a name out. You put the names in there. Let's get my beautiful assistant, Kim. <laughs> On camera, Kim. Wayne Jacob. Wayne. Is Wayne still here? Wayne will get, could you write World is Open book for Wayne? Oh, wonderful world. And can we get uh, Justin here? Justin, can you draw one out for my R2D2 book? And get you on camera here, Justin. We'll, we'll do a couple more. Uh, Tanushri Banarji, who just left us. Now, do we have the rule in place that the person needs to be with us to win? Uh, uh, I think we should put that rule in place. What do you all think? Uh, can you hear me? I think the person who won here is not here. So we've got... Um, you have to be here. Okay, come on back. And is she here with us, or he here? Did he come back? No, he's gone, long gone. Pull another name out and get that first person to give you their address. Sue Tundralt is Sue with us. Yes, she is from Florida. Uh, send Kim your address. You get a R2D2 book. Okay, Dong Il, come over here and sing us a song while I take a break. This is my, my doc student from Seoul National University who studies artificial intelligence, studies mobile learning, studies online learning, e-learning, and extreme learning, and all sorts of stuff. But he sings in the spare time. So thank you. <laughs> this song is. The name of this song is Freedom Song by Jason Mraz. Okay, let me start. I 
I picture something It's beautiful It's full of life and it is all blue I see the sunset on the beach It makes me feel calm When I come I feel good When I feel good I stand And any joy it brings Makes me feel good When I feel good I stand Any joy it brings Come on along, I know you really want to feel our song We've got some light to bring We've got some joy on this thing Come on along, I know you really want to feel our song We've got some light to bring We've got some joy on this thing I see a bird fly across the sky Everyone's heart fly to get there Food is frying and people smiling Like there is no other way I feel good When I feel good I say Any joy it brings makes me feel good when I feel good, I stand and any joy it brings. Come on along, I know you really want to feel our song. We've got some light to bring, we've got some joy in this thing. Come on along, I know you really want to feel our song. We've got some light to bring, we've got some joy in this thing. I feel good When I feel good I sing Any joy it brings Makes me feel good When I feel good I sing Any joy it brings Freedom Wow, you deserve your freedom. Sing it, freedom. Sing it, freedom. Wow, you deserve your freedom. Sing it, freedom. I catch you, get 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 a freedom. I said, I catch you, get 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 a freedom. I said I got you, 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 got freedom. I said I got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, get a freedom. Come on along, I know you really want to feel our song. We've got some light to bring, we've got some joy in this thing. Thank you, John Gill. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, we have two more books to raffle up. We'll go to Jarl and Sarah. So I will pick a name, and Dong Gill, come here and pick a name um, from a book. I'll pick one. And Valerie Holmes gets a World is Open book. Is Valerie, I'm assuming you're still with us. I saw her name earlier. I don't see her name now, actually. She may be gone. So I'm going to pick another name, actually, unless she's there. I, I see a Valerie see her. here. I don't see her. I don't see her. Okay. No. That's not the one. A, we have two Valeries. So we'll go with Zach. Zach, you won last week. Go with another name. Terry Anderson, our FBI guy, gets a World is Open book. Get Terry's address and come here, Dongy. He'll Get on camera and pick one out of the hat. Oh. Vanessa Denon, my former student. <laughs> Vanessa, do you have my R2D2 book? <laughs> She's not on anymore. Hey, we'll pick another name. Good. I can give her a real hard time. You go ahead and read that. Respa? Jennifer Respa won last week. Give her pick another name. She keeps winning. 
Maria. Paul, is there Maria? It's got a. Mm, we've got a folder. That, Paulus Chorus. Is, she's still Maria. Get an R2D2 book. There we go. Again, I want to thank everybody for being with us five weeks. Some of you are wondering uh, what we were doing there, going around recognizing people uh, and trying to make this week a little different. We weren't planning to present anything. We're planning mainly to be Q&A and demonstration, but we've added a few things in here. I uh, hope that you got a little bit. Jarl, I'm going to be quiet now and check out. So you guys take over, um, and I'll be back at the end to say goodbye. So I'll be hanging around here, and I'm going to turn my video off, and you guys go with it. So see you guys Thanks at the Kurt. end. Just want to quickly do uh, an audio check here. I don't have my video engaged since I'm docked on my uh, docking station. Um, just want to do a quick poll. Can you hear me? If you can give me a yes, no. Great. Seeing a good number of yeses there. Excellent. Uh, so first, before I start, I just wanted to go ahead and ask everyone if they could give Kurt a great round of applause, either virtually here or stand up in your office and do a standing ovation. Uh, thank you so much, Kurt, for the long hours that you've spent. I know uh, we both had had difficult sleep cycles over the last five weeks, emailing in the middle of the morning. <laughs> uh, but I really, really appreciate, we all appreciate, as I can see, over the last five weeks, the time and energy you've spent with us. So I also want to recognize uh, your TA, the work that they've spent in the course, and the work from Sarah, my colleague, and then Nina as well to help put this effort together. So just great, great work. Thank you all so much. And thanks to everybody who's been participating and been actively engaged in the class for all of your feedback. So what I wanted to do as we close this evening is we had a good number of questions come in um, this past week, so I wanted to provide some course reminders, kind of a Q&A in terms of the course itself. I wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit about the badge. So some of you might remember we've announced that you do have the ability to obtain a badge in the course. And inside the class, uh, there is an Earn a Badge section, which you can read a bit about it if you haven't um, heard about it. But in each week, along with the orientation area, you'll see that there is a badge section. And once you complete the stated requirements in that area, you're then going to go ahead and mark that item as reviewed. And as you go through the class, uh, some of you are already at the point where you're in week five and ready to do that after tonight's session. Um, but once you mark that reviewed in each of the weeks, along with the orientation area and complete those requirements, you'll then see the badge that we're providing in the Earn a Badge area in the course. What we've done as the course has transpired is worked with the Mozilla Open Badge backpack and gave you a link to be able to store that badge in the backpack. So you have the option of just downloading and putting the badge on your blog, or you can click the link here to engage a process to uh, sign up with Mozilla and store your badge within their backpack. The one thing I do want to make sure that you're aware of is that the email addresses must match in order for this to work correctly. So if you, um, on your course sites account, your email should be the same as the one that you sign up with Mozilla. Okay, if you don't remember your course sites email account, you can always go to your personal information on the My Course Sites tab. Okay, I'm going to take questions and I'll scroll through the uh, chat here as we go through, but go ahead and if you have questions on that, let me know. And a good number of you have been great about providing feedback. We even had a question about it this evening about what we might do differently. Uh, so Kurt uh, had some good comments along those regards. I, I agree with some of the comments that he's, he's provided. And as we look to provide future experiences within our open course series, we really want to hear from you all uh, about what the experience was like for you. So we've released the survey in week five. It will be the open course evaluation. It's available now. Uh, we have made it a requirement as part of the badge just because we would like, really like to hear from everybody beyond some of the feedback that we've already received so thus far. So please go ahead and uh, complete that when you get a moment. And if you haven't already, I know we've provided a great number of resources within each of the weekly areas. But it, we do have a resources area where we've been collecting some nice to knows that have been related to the weekly information, but uh, have been um, you know, just further information for you to explore. So make sure that you access the resources area and go ahead and download what is uh, relevant to you. And again, just to remind everyone, the course will be available indefinitely. So this doesn't have to happen tomorrow, tonight. You can go back in, review the, the recordings, the, and download resources, provide these to your colleagues, and they can go in and explore and take the course more in a self-paced manner um, 
but it will be open indefinitely for everyone to access and continue to connect as we asked today to see if people were going to go ahead and do. Okay, and then we did announce too earlier that we're going to make this course available as an open educational resource and just wanted to describe a little bit about what that means. So the course sites, as I'll explain a little bit in terms of what is course sites, we've been using that as our platform here to provide this learning experience. We have the ability to publish classes as an open educational resource to uh, what is known as our course homepage. So most of you have probably been coming to the open.coursesites.com, selecting the class link and logging in from there. That's the actual page where you'll find once we publish the course as an open education resource to uh, download either a common cartridge package or a Blackboard package. The material in the course at that point will be tagged with a CC BY license with the exception of what's already been um, copyrighted such as some of, of Kurt's work and that will be in a format that may not be remixable, remat uh, rematchable as stipulated by the CC BY license. Okay. The CC BY license comes from the Creative uh, Commons attribution and this is one of their most open licenses. It just asks that if you do use the material and this is also what you'll see within the course as well. If you use the material it just asks you to attribute, uh, you know, reference the author who actually created the work. So that will be tagged within the course package as well. If you have further questions on that, just go ahead and let me know. But again, you can go to open.coursesites.com. This will happen towards the end of this week, if not early next. We'll announce that. We just want to make sure that all the assets will be in place and all of the proper attributions will be listed. And then we'll go ahead and package that up and announce the availability of the course as an open education package. Now, if you're working with an uh, LMS that has common cartridge ability to import, um, then you'll be able to go ahead and use that or if you're having to use a Blackboard system, you, you would be able to import this as a Blackboard package into that environment as well. Okay. So before I start in terms of the what is course sites, because we've gotten that as a question along the way, I wanted to do a quick poll here to see if anybody on the call still with us has been utilizing course sites as an instructor. So each of you have been a participant in our course here with Dr. Bonk, but some of you may have already had signed up as with course sites as an instructor and have been using it with your students or to experiment with the technology. So just wanted to get a good sense so I know who's with us today and how deep I might need to go to explain. And if you are using it, as an instructor, which I see about 16 folks are, have said yes so far, I would really appreciate if you could put in the chat about how you're using it so those of us who may not have signed up so far uh, could learn a little bit how Core Sites is being leveraged um, from some of us here in the audience. So let me go publish this so you can see the results of what I'm seeing here. Okay, so the majority of us have not signed up for course size as an instructor, which is okay. We did invite our user base to the MOOC, uh, but also invited quite a few people from outside of the course sites as well to participate. So what I want to do now is just talk, I talk a little bit about what is course sites and how you might be able to leverage it. Um, we wanted to make sure uh, that you were aware, because again, we had a couple of questions about what is it, uh, why we decided to use it for this learning experience. So to give you a brief history lesson, Course Sites actually has been around with Blackboard since it's almost since its inception in 1999. It was launched as a way to allow teachers to try the Blackboard technology um, and, and to see what it was all about. And it went through a couple of different iterations over the years, but last February in 2011 we decided to go ahead and relaunch what we call our next generation version and really paid a good amount of attention to individualizing the experience, um, trying to make it available for teachers for the various reasons that we see down here below. And first and foremost, Blackboard's mission is everyone educated. So it was a way for us to give back to the community, uh, particularly of teachers who might not have access to such technology. So we wanted to put that in the hands of teachers to experiment, get their feet wet, be able to access what this online learning technology is all about, and have a safe environment to do so. So we know that there's a lot of choices out there for teachers to utilize as a tool, but we, and we want it to be among those choices and help to familiarize educators with what it's like to teach in blended and online learning environments. And then in that regard, we also wanted to try to create a one learning landscape. So there's a, a good number of tools out there for teachers to choose. Um, in that regard, 
I could potentially have a blog that students would visit, a publication space that uh, students would visit elsewhere, a wiki here. Uh, and in course sites, we wanted to try to bring that together, make it a, a bit more of a seamless experience for teachers and students, um, knowing that some of them you know, would like that, that ease of use. And as, as, a, as a Blackboard technology, we uh, also knew that putting out our latest version would be go ahead and provide current clients with the ability to see where we're at, and it would help them to see what their upgrade processes might be like. And then, as you might have noticed throughout this entire course, we've actually been able to utilize um, our connection with you all to have a sense of what the experience is going well, what experience is going not so well, and be able to try out some different features. So the blog feed that we created during this course is actually something that is, uh, came about as a result of the feedback we received as part of this experience, and it's something that we'll probably continue with, and that might end up eventually within our overall uh, course uh, environment as a permanent feature. So I want to thank you for your connection, for your feedback in that regard, as well as um, for all those users who have been helping us to make course sites a better experience over the last year and a half as well. Okay, so I saw some great feedback coming in through the, the chat, as a couple of folks telling us how they're using course sites, so I want to come back to that as well. Let me go ahead and um, I'm going to dock my chat panel, make sure that's not in the way. But in terms of what Course Sites actually is and what it can provide for you, it is a free hosted online learning management system, which gives you the ability to supplement your course, perhaps teach a hybrid uh, course if, you're not, if you don't have access to such technology to do so, or, or host a full online class. So what we see here is the ability for you and students to access course materials asynchronously, not in real time. Uh, provided access to the internet and, and a web connection uh, and a computer. All right, we also have capabilities like we're doing today is to launch a live classroom uh, from within each course site. So you students can connect with one another to complete projects or you could connect, have office hours. And we do have some mobile learning capabilities if you wanted to try out and see um, how some um, students might be able to access their course content and discussions on iPhones and iPads or Android devices, which are really, you know we're seeing in their hands as, as these two are doing walking down the hallway, hopefully not bumping into each other, but as we're seeing many students do nowadays on campus and in, in schools. And we also have some capabilities where you can push out notifications via SMS. Again, trying to access students where they're at, get the information in front of them. Email is being used less and less, as we are seeing from trends. And smart devices, smartphones, SMS communications being used a bit more. So just trying out some communication in that regard. It's something that we didn't actually uh, try out in this course, but we might do so in future courses. Uh, we have a couple of partners with us uh, here. We have NBC Learn, so you have access to pull in some NBC videos, uh, some news clips and documentaries into your courses to support some of your learning. So as Dr. Bonk talked about, having video resources a part of your class, we believe in that quite a bit, blending a lot of media to target diverse students. So the NBC Learn is a part of the Course Sites Partner uh, Library to access, along with um, a McGraw-Hill connection. So if you happen to be using the McGraw-Hill textbook as part of your class, there is a web property that easily connects uh, your course with their property so you can pull in activities, resources, tests, um, and the like, making it a more seamless experience for you and students. And we have some content and assessment creation capabilities from other partners, so known as Respondus and SoftTruck. Okay. And as I think I saw Sarah post, we do so far have a community of over 30,000 instructors so far from our, our over 141 different countries um, who have been using it. So I really appreciate uh, those, again, who have, have signed up, who have given us some good feedback and participated in the community so far. Now, if you're not sure exactly um, you know, how you might utilize this environment, as you may have experienced in this open course, part of our goal of, of launching this open course was not only to um, help leverage course sites as a way to increase everyone's knowledge about online learning and increase our own education and our own um, impact on students, but was also to provide teachers with an experience of what students would be going through. So what is taking an online course all about? So it's really a great way for you to just get your feet wet if you want an environment in which to experiment, see what some tools are about, apply some of Dr. Bonk's course ideas. Um, happy to have you as part of the Course Sites uh, community. Again, you can have 
a web supplement to your face-to-face -face class, a hybrid course, a fully online class, and it's completely subject agnostic. We have teachers in here. As we see, um, Miles here teaches science at the Vail Ski and Snowboard Academy. This is a public school in Colorado for uh, pre-Olympian athletes who are traveling all over the world. He teaches geology and physics to his students, um, and they connect with one another while they're traveling around the world and connect with the content and him um, through the various tools that are available. We have Dr. Lou Tharp at Long Beach City College who teaches philosophy um, over the last couple of years with Coresites. He's actually been with Coresites almost since our reception as well, has been a long time user there. And Debbie Purvines, who I was had the, the fortunate uh, chance of meeting and, and presenting with at a conference, who teaches some GED students uh, at a distance in Missouri, helping them to achieve that credential so they can move on to hopefully continue on in higher education, but at least achieve their GED and achieve their diploma to increase their success uh, with obtaining employment and, and being a, a good citizen. Okay, so you can check out some of their stories as well at coresites.com. When you do sign up, just to let you know, we do give you a good amount of training and support. So there's training for you all to so just track, scratch the surface about what it's like to use core sites. You have a way to orient yourself with the tools, explore the, var the variety of elements there, some steps on how to design a hybrid versus fully online class, uh, steps on how to build the actual environment, and then some reminders about how to facilitate. Okay, and then we also have the, uh, some training for teachers. And a couple of folks had asked earlier today about um, the universal design and accessibility topic. So we do currently have a self-paced class that is available. It's not facilitated, but you can go ahead and sign up and self-enroll at accessible.coresites.com. And that's available as of today. It's also something that you could, um, there are materials that you can download to be able to utilize. Uh, and if you would like, you could also download, if you happen to have a Blackboard instance at your school and would like to offer this yourself, there is a package that you can download to be able to do that. Okay, and then are we, we are also enrolled, I, I mentioned a community before, we're trying to establish an education community somewhat similar to what we try to accomplish here in the course by connecting people to help one another to talk a little bit about how, let's say, nurses are using online learning uh, technology in their courses or how, how it's being used in a community college and high school and different topics. So you'll be enrolled into an instructor community where you can go ahead and further connect in peer-to-peer -peer groups through a discussion board, an individual reflection, a journal, um, as well as, again, just experiment with some of the, te the technology yourself as a participant to see if it might work for you in a course environment. And then the students also, so if you do happen to invite actual students to your course or even invite yourself as a student, you would, could, they would be enrolled into an orientation class. And this is really to help remove technology from the equation to, uh, say, uh, to teach them how to use a discussion board, to teach them what it means to post an, an entry to a wiki so that when you ask them to do that in their class, they're hopefully familiar with and they've tested the technology and there's no blockades in the way. Um, a lot of students have some hesitation about taking tests on site, but they can practice here taking tests within the, the online environment, again, making sure that their system is set up correctly. Uh, and then when you ask them to do that in your course, hopefully it goes ahead and acts as smoothly as possible. Okay, and then course sites, knowing that there is a good amount for you to access and utilize in the platform, we want to make sure that you're supported as well as trained. So we do have some live support that's available for you. Um, my Skype, when I took the image here, just put this here, but we do have uh, live support available at these times during the week by chat. If you happen to be uh, outside the U.S. or there is a local phone number, if you happen to be able to call an 800 number behind there as well, along with a knowledge base. And then you can submit tickets to be responded to by email um, or by phone if you provide a number at which to call. So a good amount of resources to help get you started. Um, uh, again, no matter at what level you might be, if you're just getting started or if you have more advanced questions, the support team is there to help. Uh, And then 
Um, so if you do and if, if would like to get started, if you haven't already signed up, some of you have signed up as a student in the course, I would recommend that you sign up as a separately as an instructor. Um, this way you would have the ability to have both an instructor account and a student account at which to test out and view your course. Um, and as I see, there's a couple of questions that have come in. Um, when you do sign up, you'll accept a terms of use. And that terms of use, um, just to highlight some of the issues, as a free resource on the web, we do uh, have to require that users be of a 13 years of age or older. Um, and that's just a U.S. child protection and privacy law that we have to comply with. We've uh, gotten some ability to accept that from outside of the U.S. and the U.K. and the European Union region. But for the U.S., 13 years of age or older is a stipulation in terms of the use from a user perspective. And then the, when you do sign up, you have the ability to have up to five classes available at once. And each course has up to 500 megabytes of storage. There is no limit to the number of students that you can invite. As you saw in our course, there was um, you know, just at 4,000 students. So there would be uh, the ability for you to host an open class, such as we did, if that's of interest to you, using Core Sites as well. Uh, and any of the, uh, just thinking of some other common questions that have come into, I'll detach my chat panel so I can see some questions that have come through. But you know, as I've run Core Sites for the last two years, some folks have had questions about um, in terms of the content, you know, so anything that you do put on core sites is still your own. Uh, we do ask that you pass a license to us from a support perspective. We might need to copy a class so that our support team can take a look and not experiment and see what's going on in an active course. But otherwise, you still remain the owner of all the copyright that you, of all the content that you put in there, or the original authors of the content um, that you happen to be using in your course. And there is the ability, as you saw, um, as I described earlier, to export your class as a common cartridge. If you wanted it to be portable into other systems, you can also export it as a Blackboard package. If you happen to be using a Blackboard instance at your school and you start in Core Sites and want to move that over to your platform at school, that's a possibility as well. Okay, So I'm going to scroll back a bit. So Carol, I see you have a question. Um, if you can back up content, so you know, as a hosted platform, the content is backed up each night from our perspective, from a hosting perspective, but you do have the ability to export a class. Um, and that would be, in, you also have a content collection, which you can download as a zip package. So there's a, a variety of ways that you can make sure that your content is safe and protected, and you have a backup of that yourself. And Carolyn, you had a question, where can we receive the behind instructions like this one for a collaboration course? How do you get training on use of the poll and whiteboard? Um, I can, uh, if you go to uh, blackboard.com slash collaborate, you'll see that there's a support link that you can access training for the Blackboard web conferencing tools. Um, that's, again, part of the course sites. You can launch co uh, a live classroom from each of your course environments. But blackboard.com slash collaborate, and then look for the support tool. I'll put that on. Oh, thank you, Hafiz. OK, and I did want to make sure before we ended today, I know we're coming up to the end of our session, so I'll go back and review some more questions. But I did want to say this is not goodbye. This is Dr. Bonk's course was one in a series of open courses that we're looking to uh, provide. So again, thank you for your participation in that. We also do host some uh, training on a monthly basis with uh, some different partners or even just on our own as we're adding different new features. Here we have an upcoming webinar with the uh, an individual, Ruth Rominger from uh, NROC, the National Repository of Online Courses. They've also developed a framework for designing effective resources for online learning. So this will be about a one-hour session that we'll provide. And each of you will receive an invite so that you'll see where you can go ahead and sign up. But you can now go ahead at events.blackboard.com slash NROC. And Sarah, if you can help me maybe post that into the chat, that would be great. I see that got caught off a little bit there. Um, you can sign up today and receive a reminder that way as well. But we'll be sending this out to our Core Sites community and to all of the um, folks here. Um, but yes, it will be recorded. We do record all of our sessions and we post that um, onto our website along within the Core Sites community that I showed earlier.
Okay, if you want to stay in touch, if you want to hear a little bit more about these different types of trainings, um, you again, you can sign up for Core Sites. You can follow us, on, uh, be a, a fan on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook or follow us at Twitter. We do post our recordings. We post our advertisements for these types of trainings and webinars. We talk about what's new and different. Um, you know, happy to hear from you from from. And as you see, we've used Twitter in our course environment. Um, we do the same thing for our course sites community itself. So appreciate having you uh, along with us. And if you ha are using course sites and you would like to let us know a bit about how it's had an impact with you, Sarah and I would love to hear from you. So you can let us know at yarl.jonas at blackboard.com or Sarah Bishop root at blackboard.com as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back and scroll through if there's any questions, but if uh, let me know if there's any questions that you have. I'll, I'll come back to them as well. Let me see if I've missed anything in here. It's been a pretty active session, so again, want to thank you very much.